which is December 12th. It's coming up. And La Guadalupe, if you don't know, if you're not from L.A., can be celebrated quite elaborately. A lot of food and music and stuff. And in a nutshell, that holiday um, commemorates this miraculous appearance of the Virgin Mary in a flood of red roses uh, at a place called Tepeyac, outside of Mexico City, right after the Spanish conquista. And she said, the Virgin said, she spoke to an Indian there, and she said that she was pleased with all languages, indigenous and European. And she then took the white and the native races and created out of them right there a new race, La Raza Cosmica, the cosmic race of mixed blood. From the novel Our Lady of the Intersection, passage from the chapter of Guadalupe. Danny wandered back to the now quiet room across the hall and into his old bedroom, now the sanctuary. It was empty. He closed the door behind him and sat in one of the tall dining room chairs were against the wall opposite the tilma, the cloth banner of the Virgin you'll see them around this week, where his bed had once been. How had he gotten so stoned again? He massaged his eyelids and then opened them, looking up at La Virgen. The blanket of red roses spread beneath her like a tablecloth. Where had it come from? How much had it cost? What would happen to it in the morning? He kept staring at it, noticing that it seemed to have moved. That was strange. He rubbed his eyelids and tried to refocus. Now it appeared that each of the stems of the intertwined roses was moving like serpents, but it wasn't scary. It was the most <laughs> natural thing in the world. Of course the rose stems were moving. We always say that like, Guadalupe is a living being, right? One stem of the roses seemed to grow out from the rest of the blanket and went toward Danny, making a circle around his feet and moving on, passing just under the closed door. He breathed deeply and stared at the tilma, imagining the rose stems sneaking through the rooms of the house, growing the whole time in one endless garland. It wound around the feet of all the maids and the staff who worked the fiesta, and the relatives and the guests and all the romeros, and up the silver chased velvet pants of the mariachis. Danny stared intently into the sorrowful eyes of La Virgen, and the entire blanket seemed to grow like an overflowing, boiling pot of cajeta spreading throughout his old bedroom. And as long as he held La Virgen's gaze, the blanket grew. If he broke the gaze, it stopped. He stared back into her eyes and imagined he saw the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and Highland Avenue with the queen palms to the south and the fan palms to the west with a flood of red roses erupting from the center of the asphalt and spreading out in all directions, flowing through Hampton's restaurant and up and down each of the wide streets, filling them in and uniting the four quadrants of Hollywood, the gay quarter, the Mexican zone, the bohemians, the movie stars. It flowed through all the other restaurants of Hollywood, through the Rainbow Bar and Grill, through Barney's Beanery and the Soul Kitchen, the blanket of roses spread in all directions and united with the vines sprouting out from the Romero's house, filling in all the steep canyons and covering all the hills that separated the parts of Los Angeles and flowing out over the valleys and the basin alike, pushing on down to the barrio and along the coast all the way to Mexico. The blanket spread east and crushed the barbed wire fences of La Frontera and filled in the ship canal ditch of the Rio Grande. He saw the volcano over Mexico City, Popocatépetl, which was once the noble warrior in love with the Princess Ixtaccihuatl, shooting red roses out of his peak in spasms that flowed down the hillsides. One end stretched down to the tip of South America, while the other moved north toward the rest of the United States, and the dome of the Capitol building erupted with red roses out of its summit like a lactating breast, sending flowers across the Atlantic, spreading through Africa until it intertwined around the jacaranda trees of Pretoria, and the white and the black and the color townships all alike, back up through Europe, crushing Checkpoint Charlie, 
filling in the river Spree and uniting the four quadrants of Berlin and burying the searchlights and obliterating the fences of the Iron Curtain, easily crossing east and west Beirut and east and west Jerusalem and the River Jordan and all across Asia and the Pacific until the entire planet was a single nexus of stems producing countless eruptions of red, red, fucking red roses. This was what it had all been pointing toward the whole time. The first migration south from Asia, and the human sacrifices on the pyramids, and the Spanish conquest, and the miracle at Tepeyac, and the migrations back north again, across the border, and the Rio Grande. This was the destiny of La Raza Cosmica, to make the whole world a single celestial perfumed rose garden, where all languages are pleasing. Danny shut his eyes and opened them up again. Nothing had moved. The small patch of roses was precisely where it had been when he came into the room. So what was all that then, he wondered. A dream? Had he fallen asleep? But he hadn't. Was it a stoned hallucination? But no one had <coughs> hallucinated from pot, no matter what the bad after-school special said. <laughs> so what? He looked at La Virgen for answers, but, as always, she said nothing to him. But someone else appeared to be in the room. It was Refugio, and he was drunk and stumbling. That was strange, Danny thought. How the hell did Refugio get here? Refugio staggered, staggered up to Danny and sneered at him. Pinche puto payaso eres, he muttered, con tus chingadas mentiras. Vete al diablo, puto! This, too, is La Raza Cosmica, Danny realized. As the vision of Refugio evaporated into the air, still cursing, doomed to stumble, forever drunk on the flat earth. Great job, guys.